So, as one last commentary on the Maxwell-Boltzmann uh, speed distribution for molecules, let me point out that this distribution of uh, speeds of molecules, so we know roughly what that distribution looks like if I were to plot That probability distribution is uh, somewhat asymmetrical with the longer tail on the high speed side than the low speed side, mainly because that distribution needs to reach zero by the time we have zero velocity. The shape of that distribution and the uh, average speeds of the molecules depend not only, uh, uh, depend on several variables. They depend on things like the mass, because for example, if we remember what the root mean square speed of a molecule in a gas is, depends on the mass. So molecules with larger masses, because m is in the denominator inside the square root, they have smaller root mean square speeds. So that means heavy molecules have slower uh, root mean square or average or most probable velocities, and lighter molecules have faster velocities. So that's why, for example, when you breathe helium from a helium balloon, your voice sounds high-pitched is because the molecules of helium are moving much faster than the molecules of oxygen and nitrogen in the air that you're normally breathing. So certainly the mass has an effect on uh, the distribution of the speeds of the molecules, but also the temperature has an effect as well. So temperature shows up in, in the uh, uh, distribution as well. And from uh, uh, the most simplistic uh, point of view, when the temperature goes up, you expect the molecules to move faster. You expect the root mean square and the average and the most probable speeds to be higher because T is in the numerator of this square root. But there's another somewhat more uh, subtle and complicated effect as well that we can see if I plot what this Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution looks like for several different temperatures. If I plot it at one temperature, the temperature T I've written here, it looks like this. If I do it again uh, at a, let's say, a colder temperature, then the distribution is going to look like something like this. It still has the same shape. It's still asymmetric. It's got a bigger tail on the large speed side than the small speed side. The peak in the distribution is shifted down to lower speeds, like we'd expect, because I lowered the temperature. If this te cold temperature is less than the temperature for this curve. Then I've lowered the most probable velocity to a lower value. So I've shifted it lower on the, on the speed axis. Likewise, the root mean square and the average speed will be lower as well. If, on the other hand, I do this for a, a uh, relatively hot temperature, one that's larger than the, this temperature in the middle, then what this distribution is going to look like is something like this. The, the maximum is going to be shifted to larger speeds, as we'd expect. And this curve has to get lower, because since this is a graph of probability, the areas under each of these curves should be exactly the same. I have 100% probability of having some speed. But what this shows us is, at cold temperatures, I have a relatively narrow band of, of speeds at which I'm likely to find the molecules. At intermediate temperatures, that range of temperatures a uh, range of speeds at which I'm li likely to find the molecule has increased. And at hot temperatures, the range has increased considerably. So not only should you think about increasing in the temperature as increasing the, the average speed of the molecules, but you should also incre uh, think of it as increasing the range of speeds that those molecules can have. Uh, and that's one very important way to think about temperature, not just uh, changing the magnitude of, of the velocities, but changing the, the width of that distribution as well. So if you think about temperature in that way, it'll help uh, us as we understand several different thermodynamic effects and how they depend on temperature in the future.